Alright, hey guys, I'm out here today and I want to talk about ballistic coefficient and velocity. They are two completely separate things that can have a very similar effect in some ways on your bullet's flight um, and in some ways not at all. So that's what we're going to talk about today. So first off, ballistic coefficient. What is ballistic coefficient? Um, if you talk about long range, talk to somebody who's into long range shooting, you watch videos on long range shooting, you're going to hear the term ballistic coefficient thrown around a whole lot. Um, my ballistic coefficient is this, my ballistic coefficient is that, but what is ballistic coefficient? Ballistic coefficient is the measurement of a projectile's ability to resist air drag in flight. Um, there are two ways of measuring ballistic coefficient. There is the G1, uh, a projectile's ballistic coefficient. There's the G1 and the G7. Now, what those are, I'm not going to get into exact explaining that exactly, but the G, they are just two different drag models, meaning they are two different base projectile types that they use to measure, uh, that they use as a base to measure your projectile's aerodynamics from. So the, for the types of bullets that we usually shoot in long range precision shooting, very sleek aerodynamic bullets with boat tails, a G7 is going to be a much more efficient drag model to base your ballistic coefficient off of than a G1. Now you'll hear most people tell you what their G1 ballistic coefficient is, but really more than anything that's pretty much just for bragging rights. Um, it sounds really cool to say I have a 0.8 G1 ballistic coefficient, but G7 is really the one that, that really matters in that situation. It's always about half or around about half of what your G1 ballistic coefficient is. So if you've got a 0.8 G1, G, G1 ballistic coefficient, you're going to have somewhere around a 0.4 G7. So that is the two difference, and that's a very layman's way of explaining G1 and G7, but for the purposes of this video, that's really all you need to know. Now velocity, what is velocity? Obviously velocity is the speed of your projectile as, it's, as it travels. Now velocity, as soon as that bullet leaves the muzzle, it's slowing down, so it's never any faster than it is at the, the moment it leaves your muzzle. As soon as it leaves the muzzle, that bullet is dropping too. Maybe, may, it, bullet looked, you may, you, may, you may look like a bullet is traveling in a, a straight line, but that bullet is continually dropping as soon as it leaves the muzzle. <clears throat> now, where do the two come together? Okay, I shoot a hundred, in my six millimeter Creedmoor rifle, I shoot a 108 grain Hornady uh, ELD match. I've shot that bullet for a long time. As a matter of fact, I just did a video uh, last week. My, I'm in a, a series that I started called Bullet Reviews, and I did my very first bullet review on that 108 grain ELD. Um, the reason I did that is because I have shot a lot of those bullets. I'm very familiar with those bullets, and I, I really like the ELD line of bullets, as you'll see throughout a lot of my uh, bullet reviews because I will be reviewing probably a lot of the ELD bullets but the ballistic coefficient on the 108 grain ELD is a very respectable ballistic coefficient for caliber and bullet weight the 108 grain bullet now I shoot I when I shoot that 108 grain ELD my my hand load that I have loaded up for that is a about 3,175 feet per second at the muzzle. So it's that's really fast in the, gen, the grand scheme of things in, in velocity for a rifle. Now, uh, and for uh, six millimeter Creedmoor as well. But uh, the load that I shoot for my 105 grain Hornady boat tail hollow point match bullet is around 3,220 feet per second. So it's moving much faster than the than the 105 grain bullet, or 108 grain bullet. The 105 grain is moving much faster. Now, I'm gonna use 1,000 yards as our, our reference point downrange. I like using 1,000 yards because a lot of people want to get to the point where they shoot a thousand yards it sounds like a really long ways in the grand scheme of things thousand yards over a half a mile it's pretty far but in the grand scheme of long range and 
extreme long range and all that it's it's not it's too too far but we're going to use that as a as a point of reference so at a thousand yards my load that is with the higher ballistic coefficient the the 108 grain bullet is leaving the muzzle around 50 feet per second slower than the 105 grain bullet the 105 grain bullet has about 24 minutes of elevation correction at a thousand yards the 108 grain bullet has only 22 and a half minutes of correction at a thousand yards so even though the one bullet is leaving the muzzle 50 feet per second faster it's still getting down range slower and with more drop than the 108 grain bullet and that is because the aerodynamics of the 108 grain bullet which are far superior to the 105 take over at that point and allow that bullet to travel more efficiently with less drag from the air so that is how the ballistic coefficient and velocity work in that aspect now there's a point where they they even out so around 550 yards with my my 105 grain bullet it actually has less drop than the 108 grain bullet so the 105 grain bullet at around 550 yards is actually more efficient at that distance because of its speed than the 108 grain bullet so that is the and, and shortly past 550 yards the 108 grain bullet actually starts to take over and have and the ballistic coefficient actually starts to take over and allow it to be more efficient than the 105 I hope I hope you guys are following along here I know this is kind of kind of all over the place but I've tried the point I'm trying to make is is that there there is a balancing act between the two so the 105 grain bullet at 550 yards is more efficient because of its velocity whereas at a thousand yards the 108 grain bullet is more efficient because of its ballistic coefficient I did a video a couple of years ago called uh, I, I actually can't remember the name of it um, it's may, it may have been a year and a half two years ago somewhere in there well it was me shooting my 300 wind mag it was actually this rifle um, before it was a 7 som um, me shooting the 300 wind mag with a 208 grain Hornady uh, ELD and my friend shooting his 338 Lapua with a 285 grain ELD now both of our rifles I can't remember the exact velocity now but they were both within five feet a second of each other at the muzzle we, we did a video shooting out to 2,000 yards we put balloons on the target and then we I put a split screen showing that the the 338 Lapua 285 grain bullet had a much faster ballistic or had a much higher ballistic coefficient but was leaving the muzzle at about the same speed as my 208 grain bullet but when you put the split screen together as we fired at the exact same time the bullets that are the balloons that were on the target for his 285 grain bullet at 2,000 yards popped about four tenths of a second before the balloons popped from my 208 grain bullet meaning that that bullet the ballistic coefficient allowed that bullet to be so much more aerodynamic that it took four tenths of a second less for that bullet to get there even though they're leaving the leaving the muzzle at the exact same speed so it was a very good representation of how ballistic coefficient work um, that's another thing 338 Lapua that's something else I kind of wanted to mention um, 338 Lapua is an awesome long-range caliber but that's a, this is a this is a place where ballistic coefficient isn't always king um, people have kind of neutered the 338 Lapua wanting to go with these you can get some bullets in the 338 in the 338 caliber that are extremely high ballistic coefficients I mean extremely high but they they come at a cost they're extremely heavy so you're looking at like a 300 grain bullet with an outstanding 0.85 G1 or 0.5 or 0.45 G7 ballistic coefficient but 
they are launching so much slower than say a 250 to 270 grain bullet, a 338 bullet with a much lower ballistic coefficient that the distances that those that you're playing, even at ELR distances, say 2,000 yards, you're actually getting less drop with the 338 caliber sometimes with the with the 250 grain bullet that's traveling so much faster I'm talking 2950 feet per second compared to 2750 feet per second in the 300 grain bullet so you get a lot sometimes velocity is more important than ballistic coefficient and other times ballistic coefficient is king so that's kind of what I wanted to explain in this video is that there so you, you kind of got to it's kind of a balancing act and you want to know what's going to be better for you for your purposes if you plan to shoot ELR distances I'm talking like you know a mile and beyond you want to know is velocity going to get me there more efficiently at the distances that I plan to shoot than having that higher ballistic coefficient or in like the case of my six millimeter is ballistic coefficient going to get me out there further than the velocity so that's what I want to talk about it's all give and take and a balancing act but that's where ballistic coefficient and velocity can kind of come into play and that's where you need to know and do your homework and know what is going to make a more efficient load for your rifle and your purposes so I hope you guys got some out of this I hope it wasn't too all over the place and I hope my point came across and I'll see you guys next time I'm out Impact. Yeah. Now I get to drive 2,000 yards downrange and put up another balloon for you. Let's see if I can hit it. Not dead center like yours, though.